Summary statistics is a very useful technique to get some interesting insights about the data as they provide numbers that can help you to summarize your data in an overall sense. So what does summary statistics include? Well, the type of the summary statistic that you want to get will depend upon the type of the feature. So if you have a numerical feature or numerical column, means if you have real world continuous values, then you can look into its centrality measure and the dispersion measure. Typical centrality measures are mean and median. And for the spread or dispersion, you may want to look into the values such as range, percentiles, variance, and standard deviation. For categorical feature where you have categories, you cannot directly calculate centrality and dispersion measure. But you can use other metrics such as total count. You can also find out how many unique values are there in that categorical feature. You may also want to look into the category wise breakup such as per category count and proportions. Not only this, you can also look into the summary statistics for other numerical feature when you group the observations using the categorical feature in hand. We will go into the details later when we will discuss the grouping and aggregations. So now let's discuss these summary statistics starting with the centrality measure of a numeric feature next. Centrality measure provides you a number that you can use to represent the entire set of values for a certain feature. This number will be central to the data and that's why we call it as central tendency. Now let's look at some common centrality measures. First and in fact the very common centrality measure is mean or average. So you can calculate a single value for a numerical feature and this figure will tell you about an average behavior for any numerical feature. Let's take an example. Suppose we have 10 passengers and we have age values for these 10 passengers. So we can calculate mean age by adding up all the ages and then dividing up by the number of values. So in this case, we get a mean value of 10. So overall, by using the single summary statistic of 10, we can say that we have bunch of young kids here. Well, even though mean is a very useful statistic, it has its own problems. The main problem with mean value is that it is easily affected by extreme values. Let's suppose we add one more individual to this group with an age of 98 and suddenly the mean value will jump to 18. So if you were given a single value of 18, then you would have thought that you have bunch of adults here. While the truth is that you have some young kids and one very old person. So be cautious whenever you are using mean to infer some information about the data. Another centrality measure that can help us to get rid of this issue of extreme values is called as median. Median represents the middle value in the sorted list of values. Let's again take the age example. So we have 10 individuals and we want to calculate the median value. So we can first sort the age values. And once we have a sorted list, then we can find the middle value. And as we have 10 values here, which is an even number, therefore we will have two middle values. That means that 50% of values will be above these middle values, while 50% of values will be below these middle values. Therefore, to calculate the median, we can take the average of these two middle values. So our median will be 10. Now let's introduce an old person in the list with the age of 98, just like we did in the mean case. So now we have 11 individuals in the list and because 11 is an odd number, we only have one middle value that is 10. Therefore, the median value is 10. So as you can see, with the extreme value in the list, the median value has not been affected. Therefore, median is a much safer figure if you want to talk about the centrality measure and getting some insights from data. So we talked about a couple of centrality measures, mean and median, but these are not sufficient alone because few values in the data could be near the central value while few could be far away. That's why you may also want to look into the spread of data to get some more insights. So we will discuss spread or dispersion measure next.